Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white life gain deck featuring Amalia, or Amalia, depending on how you want to pronounce it as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 2-mana two 2-2 two -two has ward making the opponent pay 3 life, which also works well with our aggressive game plan, since a lot of the life gain payoffs in this deck will end up picking up extra plus 1 counters, including Amalia. Whenever we gain life we get to explore, so we either draw land or we get to keep a non-land on top or put it in the graveyard and pick up a plus one plus one counter which can eventually get Amalia up to 20 power where it will destroy all other creatures although not super likely to come up and then alongside Amalia we also get to play with Lurus as our companion and we don't actually have to give up a whole lot to play Lurus as companion here since most of the life gain enablers and payoffs happen to be one or two mana permanents and then Lurus gives us an excellent late game especially when paired with Amalia which will explore more stuff into the graveyard so we can get those back and then here's a breakdown of our deck. I've split it up into a few different categories. We start with some of the miscellaneous cards, a bit of mana accelerations in there too. Then we've got a ton of interaction, mostly spot removal spells, but also a few discard spells to try and slow down the opponent's game plan. And then by far the biggest category are the life gain cards. We've got plenty of one and two mana life gain enablers and payoffs. And then finally we've got a few cards to protect some of our key creatures, ways to make creatures indestructible, which can then be sacrificed and maybe brought back from the graveyard with Lurus, so those are also great. And on top of that we've got a few more sorceries to bring creatures back from the graveyard, so if the opponent manages to deal with Lurus when we can't protect it, then we can still maybe get Lurus back and to rebuild our board state from our graveyard. So now with a deeper dive, starting with the miscellaneous section, we've got Mishra's Bauble, which has a great synergy with Lurus as a free card we can get back from the graveyard each turn. Mox Amber has quite a few legendaries throughout to give us a mana boost. A Luminarch Aspirant is just a good 2-drop and can help grow some of our lifelink creatures so those can keep attacking. And then it's also a Cleric, which can also be relevant with some of our other cards. Then a Lotho is great if we can double spell and start making treasures, and since our curve is so low, that's usually not a problem and we can easily offset the life loss. And then Arcane Signet can make an extra mana right away. And then Lingering Souls, also good if we explore it and put it in the graveyard, since we can still flash it back and also provides multiple bodies to maybe gain life with and chip at the opponent's life total. Then in our interaction section, we've got Curse of Silence to name the opponent's commander and slow it down, as per Sentinel to tax non-creature spells, and then we've got a few more discard effects with Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek and Thoughtseize, and then most of the other cards here are removal spells, starting with Swords to Plowshares and Fatal Push, then we've got the new Get Lost, the Rider to answer artifacts and enchantments, and we can also bring it back from the graveyard with Lurus, Bitter Triumph, Go for the Throat, Heartless Act, Shielder's Edict, and then a D-Spark and Vanishing Verse are also quite versatile. Then moving on to our life gain cards, at 1 mana there's a Janice Welcome, Authority of the Consoles to make opposing creatures enter tapped and gain life, Cleric Class will gain us additional life, and there's a few payoff cards in this deck that want us to gain a lot of life, and eventually can also give us more plus 1 counters. Healer's Hawk as an evasive 1 mana life linker can also set up a turn to Amalia very nicely to immediately enable it. Then there's Legion's Landing, which we can also quickly transform thanks to all the cheap creatures in this deck and give us an extra land that can also make life linking tokens. We've got the Vanguard, which doesn't even have to attack to gain life each turn. The Lunark Veteran, whenever we play creature, gains life. The Ruin Lurker Bats, just a better version of the Healer's Hawk nowadays. We've got Sarah Ascendant as one of those payoff cards if we have 30 or more life, and in Brawl we start at 25, so we only need to gain 5 life to turn this into a 6-6 flying a lifelink, so that's quite the payoff. Then a Soul Warden or best 1 mana, a life gain enabler. We've got Soul Mender which can tap to gain 1 life. Speaker of the Heavens, another one of those payoff cards. Now we need to have 7 more than our starting life total, so in Brawl that's going to be 32 to tap and make a 4-4 Angel token. Then we've got the Traveling Minister, which can give a creature one extra power and gain one life. Archfiend's Vessel, a 1-1 life link that when we get it back from our graveyard, whether it's with Lurus or some of our sorceries, turns into a 5-5 flyer. Then the Reckoner Raid will drain the opponent twice, enabling our life gain synergies. The Vampire, a 1-1 Death Touch life link, so also good to trade and eventually get back. And then a Fountain of Renewal will gain one life passively, can also be sacrificed to draw. The Sentinel will gain life whenever the opponent plays a non-basic land, which is quite often. And then Vault Scourge we can also play on turn 1 if we pay 2 life, as another 1-1 one, one flying lifelink. And then at 2 mana, some of our enablers and payoffs include a Janice Pride Mate to get an extra counter. 
got the Archivist, which also got a lot better now with fetch lines being added to the format, as the opponent's more likely to search their library, which will then net us a card and one life. Blind Obedience I've been a fan of as well, as kind of a mana sink to drain the opponents and make their creatures and artifacts enter tapped. And then both Orator and Daxos will gain one life when our creatures enter. Voice of the Blast, another payoff that can eventually gain Flying and Vigilance as well. And then a Blood Artist will drain the opponent whenever any creature dies, including ours, but also the opponent's, and we've got a few removal spells to enable it. The Deep Cavern Band gives us more hand disruption on top of a 1-1 Flying Lifelink. Then a Meyer Triton will mill two cards, gain two life on a 2-1 Death Touch, so it can also fill the graveyard for us nicely. Sanctum of Stone Fangs, another enchantment that's difficult to interact with, that will slowly drain the opponent. Cleric of Life's Bond can gain life when clerics enter, and we've got a decent amount of them, and then also grows much like an Ajani's Pride Mate, although only once each turn. And then the Pilgrim will gain life when creatures enter, while draining the opponent when our creatures die. And then we've got the Protection category, starting with the Alsate of Life's Bounty, which we can sacrifice to give protection of our color until end of turn. We've got the Giver of Runes, which simply has to tap to give protection. And then both a Selfless Savior and the Selfless Spirit, also a Cleric, can be sacrificed to make stuff indestructible. It's also perfect to get back with Lurus. And then last but not least, Helping Hands and Unearth, as a one mana sorceries to get a creature with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard onto the battlefield. Call of the Death Dweller can get multiple cheap creatures back, or maybe just get back Lurus, as well as giving it Menace and Death Touch. And finally, Return to the Ranks doesn't get back Lurus, but can also get back multiple creatures from our graveyard at once. And then our mana base includes a few fetch lands, since those can get our Godless Shrine as kind of a black-white dual land, and they can also help enable some synergies like Revolt on Fatal Push. And then we've got a few lands that gain life when they enter, like the Obscura Storefront fetching for a basic, and then as Coward Barons also enters tapped but gains one life. I'm not playing with Radiant Fountain since I don't want any colorless lands if I can avoid it. And then some of the utility lands include the channel lands, which we can use to take out creatures or maybe get them back from the graveyard. Then a few creature lands as well, Hive of the Eye Tyrant can be a good mana sink in the late game. And finally a Restless Fortress, another creature land that has good synergy in a life gain deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Croxa, Black Red, and uh, yeah, our hand's fine. Could use a few more creatures to synergize with the Veteran, but it's likely going to get taken out. But a turn one Veteran, turn two Amalia is not a bad start. Fountain can also enable it. Opponent with a Mox Amber. So next turn they can play Croxa and temporarily float some mana, cast another 1-drop. Flooded Strand to maybe get Godless Shrine here. And the Village Rides to sack Croxa and draw 2. So they got some nice value. What do I get rid of? Probably a land. Let's get rid of the Clearing since we could actually use this to enable Amalia in the future. Return to the ranks could be sweet if the game drags on, but I'm probably not going to be able to keep it in hand for long. And Sentinel. We already see quite a few basics on the opponent's side. It is a one-mana creature to enable Veteran if it survives. But I also kind of just want to put more creatures in the graveyard for return to the ranks. So next turn we can maybe go Fountain plus Duress. Tunnel Grinder, a good way to fill the graveyard for Croxa. But uh, let's have a look. And see what the opponent's working with. All right, lots of removal, better reunion, and a call against command. Probably what I have to take since it answers fountain and takes out one of my creatures. And a bobble. I also don't really need to keep on top. Ser opponents. Could cast both 
Edict and Heartless Act, clean up both creatures. But they're going for Bitter Union first. And then Plunder to make me discard. Okay, um, I guess get lost instead of go for the throats. And I'll decline. Found a land and a cleric class. So in the graveyard we just have the one sentinel at the moment. So I can play cleric class, keep up go for the throats. Our opponent can escape Crocs on next turn, so if that comes back it makes me discard. Could mean that I keep my land in hand to discard to Croxa. Although then again it's not like Return to the Ranks is looking all that great right now. Could also put Lurus in hand. And then if they escape Croxa we uh, discard Return to the Ranks and then go for the Throat answers it. And then later we have Lurus as an option getting back our uh, Sentinel. So it's a close call here. I think I'm just going to pass. We'll probably find more lands with Amalia. And I want to be prepared to answer Croxa. Alright, Point's going to try and give it haste. So we'll take it out before it gets a chance to attack once again. Now they do get to enable the Tunnel Grinder here. So that transforms. And they could still cast the Edict at least. Goes for Go for the Throat on Amalia. So they have to pay the ward. Then we could decline to put it back in the command zone and then cast return to the ranks for uh, x equals 2, getting back Sentinel and Amalia. Opponent is getting pretty low. And drew a Lingering Souls. Okay, so now I could cast Lingering Souls and still return for x equals 1, just getting back Amalia. Or we can, as we said, return for 2, get Amalia and Sentinel. And then Lingering Souls is not a bad leftover. Especially if they make me discard, I can still flash it back. Although with their opponent at 8, making some evasive creatures is not a bad idea. Yeah, let's go with Lingering Souls Return. Hoping Amalia picks up a plus 1 counter here, so it doesn't die to Heartless Act. And a Blind Obedience could maybe get the job done as a way to drain the opponent to death. So we're empty-handed. Didn't really care about another discard spell. And our opponent discovers an Earth, which can't get anything back. So it goes to hand. So they can do the Mox Amber trick to make an extra mana. Let Croxa go to the graveyard, bring it back with an Earth, but that's just to deal 3 damage. So they probably have other plans. Heartless Act the Veteran for starters. They probably don't want to tap Mount Doom since it deals them 1 damage. Okay, so we've got a few things we can maybe bring back from the graveyard. But the priority is probably still to cast a Blind Obedience so they can make me discard it. We're hitting the opponent for 6. So next turn, Lingering Souls pay the 1. Even if they wipe the board somehow, it's going to be pretty good. So yeah, had we drawn a few more lands with Amalia's ability, we might have been able to get Lurus going or Cleric class. Opponent actually has a Sweeper. 
So, back to the command zone with Amalia. And, uh, yeah, go with the Lingering Souls. Pay the one. And we just need to cast another spell here to win the game. At 30 life. I feel pretty safe. Red-Black doesn't have many answers to enchantments. And they still need to deal with the 1-1 one -one Flyers. So there's Croxa. Finding a Mishra's Bauble. So they essentially have three mana left since they can't tap Mount Doom and uh, Meat Hook Massacre for one. Okay, well, if this wasn't a nerfed Meat Hook Massacre, that might have saved them. But uh, yeah, the current iteration in Brawl does not gain any life. So we can just cast any of our spells, pay the one. And that should be game. And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Mondrak, Glory, Dominus. I could see this being a pretty tough matchup if we don't deal with Mondrak right away. Blind Obedience seems decent in a matchup, tapping the opponent's stuff down. But don't really have anything to synergize with Blood Artists. Kind of lacking in the removal department. So I'm basically hoping that I can keep my life total high and then start making tokens with Speaker, which could be a viable strategy, to be fair. Yeah, maybe it's worth a shot. And I'll run out Speaker since we're on the play. Might be able to get an attack in. Alright, Authority makes my creatures enter tapped. But uh, yeah, we'll just play Amalia. And get immediate value. And Pilgrim's not terrible either. It's more life gain. Could also dig towards more lands, although we're gonna find more. And then next turn we can play Pilgrim plus Minister. And gain some more life. We could already see Mondrak next turn. Giver of Runes isn't bad, but I really want to hit my land drops. So we're up to 28. And we do need 32 or more life for this to activate. So we're getting close. Opponent plays a land and passes. They could have some instant speed tokens, of course. So if I play Blind Obedience, those will at least enter tapped. So, then it's not going to be a surprise. So we'll start there. Opponent with an absence on Amalia, that's fine. Pump speaker, attack. And yeah, we're at 32, so I can activate Speaker. Make an Angel. And hope to dodge a board wipe here. Catra's Monument's fine. The opponent's creatures will enter tapped. Okay. So I can play Signet, pay the one, Sanctum, pay the one, and then attack all out, basically. That seems fine. Uh, 
And then Speaker makes another Angel. So now if they do cast a board wipe, they die to the Pilgrim and Blood Artist triggers. There's Mondrak. And a Blade Splicer, so they're making some tokens here. But the Flyers are still threatening lethal. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Watley. Could be a dinosaur ramp deck. And uh, our hand is acceptable. Turn one, I could go with kind of a discard approach where we Inquisition play Bat to either take away a removal spell for Bat first or just maybe take the ramp spells so they're off to a slower start. Or we can go for Life Linker into Amalia to start gaining value and growing it. I think, given that we're on the draw here, I'm just gonna go with Inquisition on one. And maybe Bat on two. Alright, so opponent's got some land destruction, a lightning bolt, a Ren's Resolve. So I can take the bolt and then next turn take the Stone Rain, perhaps. Alright, Pona not going for the Run Resolve just yet. Yeah, I think uh, taking Stone Rain is reasonable. Could also just uh, cast a couple of 1-drops. But that's going to be easier to do next turn alongside a 2-drop. So I'll play the Bat. Now they still have Watley as a 3-mana play, so we're not really disrupting their curve too much. But a Fable's an even better play now. Okay, so it could be time to deploy Amalia. If I go Amalia plus Vanguard, it will immediately trigger plus once again from the Bat. And then we might have a big enough blocker for the Shaman to discourage an attack. Found a land, can we hit a non-land card here? Another land, so not quite what we were hoping for under these circumstances. Opponent ditching Resolve and Might. So Reconstruct History can get three cards back. Good value. And Shaman attacks. We'll have to take the hit here. But of course, Lightning Bolt can now clear Amalia. So yeah, that was a good turn for them. So I guess even had we picked up one plus one counter, it would not have mattered. Sarah Ascendant, we're not super close to enabling. Or just play a Vampire of Dire Moon. It's also fine. Could have also played my fetch line here to enable the Rune Lurker Bat. For a 26. And an escape to the wilds can keep them ramping. Finding a couple expensive spells. But they can still cast them next turn. Yeah, I should probably take the trade now. It's not like we can block questing beasts with our vampire. Okay, and then now if we play Minister and Ascendant. Should be able to get to 30. 
Could also go Amalia plus Ascendance. Maybe save Iganjo to answer Questing Beast. Could also keep it up. Uh, so we don't have to trade Ascendance. So we certainly have a few options. Yeah, if I play Amalia and keep up Iganjo, it's only going to work if they don't take out any of my legendaries before attacking, and Chandra could take one of them out. But we do get immediate value here off Amalia, so kind of like playing it. Could have also waited to uh, play my land in case we hit one right away. An Earth, I guess, is good to have. Although I'm going to fetch it away if I uh, use Flooded Strand. But that does mean we now get to grow Amalia up to 5 toughness, so it doesn't die to Chandra's minus. Attacking with Vanguard was also reasonable here. Alright, we'll see what happens. Play Chandra. And take out Pilgrims, so now Iganjo is no longer an option, sadly. So this Questing Beast will hit me. But then I don't need to fetch so we can keep the Unearth on top. So step on Unearth Pilgrim. Now we're back to having a one mana Iganjo. Can uh, play Minister, play Sarah Ascendance, and still attack. We get to take out Chandra. Veteran's good to put in the graveyard as well. And a Volt Scourge can go as well. All right, so Malia is ticking up. Probably could have gotten away with uh, Vanguard attacking once again. And a Pride Mate. Take it or leave it at this point. I guess uh, we'll keep it on top and then we can decide whether or not to fetch. And Ren's Resolve goes digging. They kind of need to find a sweeper. Alright, Impulse the Bat. Get back Stone Rain. I don't think that matters too much at this point. And there's Watley at long last. So I can use Minister to pump one of my flyers. Yeah, I guess Pride makes a fine draw still. Cleric class I could also keep on top. Go to attackers, and then now I can send the team, since if one of our creatures trades, it will trigger Pilgrim, and hopefully finish them off. I guess they can copy the Haywire Mites and then gain some life on the way out, so that should keep them alive. And 
and then uh, I guess we can go for veteran or we can put Lurus in hands which feels a bit safer at this stage Impulse goes digging, still no sweeper so three unknown cards in hand, one of them is a helping hand for the might so they can copy with a reflection to gain some more life but uh, probably not enough Watley transforms, make two tokens and that should be game over all right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing CDC, a self-mill deck. So I don't think the rest is going to be all that great in this matchup. They may have mostly creatures. Uh, authority I don't mind, but then uh, Blood Artist, we also don't have a great way to enable right now. So I think we can do better. This is not amazing, but keepable. Vessel maybe a way to enable Amalia early on. Legion's Landing also an option. I'll go with uh, Vessel still. Turn to Amalia and then we can look into some of our other options. Poton keeps up two mana, so now I'm less into the idea of playing Amalia and more into the idea of uh, maybe flashing in the Archivist. Seems like they might have removal in hand. If Vessel dies, we can eventually get it back with Lurus in the form of a 5-5. Alright, put on doing nothing, sitting on either removal or counter spells, it seems. So playing Savior before playing Amalia is probably the way to go. So for now, play Savior. Now of course a Counterspell will still get us no matter what. And yep, there's Wash Away for one mana. We'll have to try and get an next turn. We could even play Allegiance Landing, attack with three creatures to transform it, and play Amalia second main. For now our opponent runs out Sidisi. Making a zombie. So that does actually block our stuff pretty well. So yeah, we could Heartless Act CDC and then still go Landing plus Soulmander, but I'm not sure if I want to really attack to transform Legion's Landing just to uh, lose our Selfless Savior, for instance. But it is an option. Alternatively, as we said, Legion's Landing plus Amalia after attacking, but that doesn't answer CDC, which feels like kind of a must answer right now. So we'll uh, go with that approach. Play Soulmender. Alright, at least we've got a lot of mana now, and uh, Lurus can potentially buy back Selfless Savior. Haven't gotten value from our Archivist yet, but assuming our opponent's playing a few fetch lanes, we should be able to get a card out of it. For now, Hostage Taker is also very good. Going for a Soulmender. 
So yeah, we don't want to play Lurus until we can immediately protect it with a Selfless Savior, at least. So this turn could get back Lurus, play Hawk and pass. Could also play Amalia, play Hawk, and then if we draw land next turn, which is pretty likely with Amalia's ability, then we can go for Lurus, play it, get back Savior. Opponent taking out Archivist. I think they had that Fatal Push in hand for a while. Since they kind of paused on turn one. So opponent may be about to search their library. If they have a counterspell left for Lurus, our plan sort of falls apart. For now a death rite. You can also counteract Lurus, so this might be our last chance to get back Selfless Savior. We did draw the fetch land. Alright, let's uh, attack with a hawk. Sort of feels like they might have a counter spell left, given that they could have potentially replayed CDC. So it wasn't a very mana efficient turn, but I guess they may have only had the tap land after all. So, yeah, close call for sure. I think I still go for Lurus since the upside is pretty high if it works out. Alright, that worked. Get back Savior. And then now we can hopefully protect our key threats. Grim Tutor, okay, that can maybe get a Sweeper, or some other answer to Lourdes that gets around indestructible. Opponent is down to 7 in the meantime, although both Soulmender and Deathrite can gain life back. So they've got a 4 mana card they want to cast, presumably. The Myco Tyrants, alright, that's fine. Can make a few tokens. Doesn't really stop our game plan. So possible that the card they searched up is still in hand. Ooh, uh, Blind Obedience could certainly come in handy. So I can cast Archivist, pay the one. And still get back Veteran as well, paying the one. And sure, I'll keep a uh, go for the throat on top. Okay, so let's see, your opponent's got four blockers, they're at a virtual six life. And do I just go all out? Yeah, this might be one of those situations, with Selfless Savior especially. Maybe don't send Savior itself. Okay, no need to sacrifice Selfless Savior. And then if they don't instantly exile the uh, vessel, then I can also get it back and make a 5-5. Possible opponent searched up uh, River's Rebuke to bounce everything. In which case I was better off just uh, hitting some more land drops. But we'll see. A Ritual of Suits. Alright, so we can save either Lurus or Amalia. I think Lurus makes more sense. So 
So I think I can get rid of it now. We also have a creature land that we can still activate. Right, opponent gets rid of Archfiend's Vessel, back up to 6. Send it back to the command zone. And a halfling. Yeah, okay. So we can play Selfless Savior. Pay the one. Animate Hive. Attack with both, forcing them to jump with Hostage Taker. That seems reasonable. And what do we exile at this point? Maybe a Rex Sage. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. Nice grindy game here against Sultai Self Mill. Okay, we're on the draw facing Thassa, a flicker deck. Can be pretty annoying to face at times. Our hand's also not particularly good. Sentinel opponent probably has a lot of basic lands, so it's not going to trigger. And uh, looking for a few more impactful cards. All right, this could work. I still need a second white source to play Voice of the Blessed. But at least Bobble plays well alongside Lotho, as we can uh, immediately make a treasure. Opponent's trying to mill us here, perhaps. Can start by getting a Godless Shrine and then play Cleric Class. And we'll hang on to the bobble. I'll play Igenja since we might need triple white next turn. See if this resolves. And then I could still play a Lunark Veteran, or we could pass if we suspect a counter spell, and then next turn I can still play Veteran plus Voice of the Blast, for instance. And see what our opponent's about to draw. A wash away, good to know about. So with that in mind. Yeah, I think we still just pass here. I'll take it. And then I start with Lunark Veteran. Then we can cast Voice of the Blessed which may get countered, and then I still make a treasure, so I can still cast the Aspirant. Or we could try Amalia, of course, but we know about Wash Away, which can counter it for one mana. So... Yeah, I'll, uh... Play Veteran. Could also go with Aspirant, and then wait on Voice of the Blessed, so I don't have to waste my treasure yet. And then I'll attack for two. I guess we could make it three. Alright, I'm just gonna pass the turn here. No need to play into their counter spell. And then next turn we can cast two spells at once. Time twist to flicker their creature. They could tap out for Thassa, but they're gonna hang on to their interaction. Well, with our opponent milling us, Lurus also becomes more appealing. And Allegiance landing. 
So maybe step one, play our commander, get it countered. Then play voice, and then play legion's landing while making another treasure. There's also cleric class, which we could level up. So we've got a few options. Yeah, let's start with Amalia. And that's wash away. And gets countered. Still gonna send it back to the command zone for now, even though Lurus can eventually get it back. And then we want to cast Voice of the Blessed, which will make a treasure. Trigger it. And I'll play Allegiance Landing as well, I think. Trigger Voice. And hit you for four. And then we'll end up fetching another swamp here. Sadly, don't have another dual land. Maybe with the uh, upcoming expansion, we can include the uh, dual land that lets us reveal one when it enters tapped. Bone's pretty much tapped out for Thassa. And we can pretty easily flip the Legion's Landing to here. If they flicker Apprentice, it loses its plus one counter. So yeah, so far they're not presenting the most threatening ETB effects, but that could quickly change. Cleric of Life's Bond isn't bad either. So can go with Amalia plus Cleric. Maybe after attacking, so... We uh, save ourselves a treasure. And then grow the life linker. Flip the landing. Bone jumps. Now it is possible that they have a river rebuke to bounce everything next turn, which could be a reason to just put a Lurus in hand as opposed to casting a cleric. Better triumph could be useful, especially for opponent has a powerful creature that they're going to start flickering. So close call here on what to do next. Do we have any creatures in graveyard that I can get back with abandoned mire? Not particularly. Yeah, I'll go for Lurus. I think we have enough pressure on the board as is. And then next turn we have quite a few options, including the Cleric class. Exclusion Mage, alright. That can bounce a creature, flicker with Thassa, bounce another. So, could have been a reason to still play a Cleric here. But we're about to draw a better Triumph, which can answer the Mage. So they're going to bounce Voice of the Blessed. And what's next? If I play Lotho and then Better Triumph, we get to make a treasure. So that's a good starting point. Or I could play Voice of the Blessed first. So that also picks up more counters. Return to the ranks, I guess is good to have since there's a few one-drops in the graveyard to return already. And then I think it's worth it to just clear a path. We've got life to spare. And then sure, I'll commit the Cleric as well. And then we might actually have lethal here with Amalia getting an extra counter. And that's 11 damage, sweet. 
All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Monandina, Sultai Sacrifice, and uh, our hand's reasonable. We've got one removal spell for their commander. They might be ramping and searching for various lands, so the Archivist can trigger. And if we can gain some life early, this can also run away with the game. A three-color deck also pretty likely to have some fetch lanes that uh, can enable Archivist. Already searching their deck with Into the North. So that kind of proves my point. Yeah, I think we keep up Archivist here as opposed to playing Orator or Amalia. And there we go. Get our value. Now our opponent is developing their mana, so that's pretty scary. They could cast some big spells next turn. And now I have to decide between Orator or Amalia. Get to keep up swords either way. I guess Amalia gets immediate value, even though sequencing differently would trigger Orator next turn once we play Amalia right away. Alright. Our fetch lands can also get Godless Shrine. Could have been a reason to play one now, so I could uh, fetch end of turn for a tapped Godless Shrine if we don't need two swords. There's Zemo and Dina. And a Wall of Blossoms, so... Just get rid of that one. Interestingly, I could have swords my own creature just to gain life to enable Sarah Ascendant. Now I can play Orator, play Sentinel, gain 1 up to 29. And then we're one short of Ascendant, but as soon as the Ascendant hits, it's gonna grow as well. So we'll go for it. And I guess Ascendant a reason not to pay one life to my fetch land right away. And a Call of the Death Dweller I could keep on top in case there's a Sweeper coming up. Although it doesn't really do anything right now. So maybe it's still something I should get rid of since we have Lurus to uh, eventually get stuff back. But a close call for sure. And then I think I just play a plane so I don't shrink down my Ascendant. A Wayfinder is fine. Time Warp, Rusko and Cavalier go to the graveyard, so those were some good ones. And there's Zemo and Dina once again. Okay, so at step one, play Triton, just to uh, trigger Orator and Amalia. Do we want a Ruined Lurker Bat on top? At this point, probably want something more impactful. And Giver of Runes probably can go as well. And then I can still uh, fetch for maybe just a Swamp here. We'll still be at 32, so it doesn't shrink down the Ascendant. Clear Zimon and Dina. And attack all out. Okay, so we get to see the Amalia deck in a wide range of matchups, and I'm quite happy with how the deck turned out. There's a few different ways to build it, but playing Lurus as a companion almost feels like a free roll, since there's not that many cards you're giving up in kind of a black-white life gain deck, and uh, yeah, most of the impactful life gain cards happen to be one or two mana. Now, if you're potentially looking to upgrade this deck with the upcoming expansion once it comes out, there's a few cards I can certainly recommend. One of those is Case of the Uneaten Feast, as another Ajani's Welcome that has more upside if you manage to gain enough life in one turn. 
And then Assemble the Players is also pretty synergistic since we have so many cheap creatures in the deck that we can potentially play off the top. And Amalia with the Explore ability can also keep those creatures on top so you can then cast them. So that's another nice source of card advantage potentially. And then if you want an extra dual land, you could also play the uh, Shadowy Backstreet, which you can also fetch with a various fetch land. So you have another black-white dual land that lets you surveil one, which also synergizes quite well with Lurus. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.